hi everyone so just an update video so i finally got uh, the crossfire to work so if you can see let's go to tools crossfire config and there it is micro tx appears in the crossfire setup lua scripts okay so uh, let me show you what i did all right so this is what it should look like after uh, when I mean when it works collect correctly, so what I got here is a school scope probing uh, this yellow wire which is the input to the inverter and channel 2 probing the output of the inverter Okay, and I have a crossfire module already plugged in and it's sort of Doing something I guess so let's let's look at the scope All right, so this is what the scope looks like when I probe uh, Focus. All right. Uh, when I probe the signals, so you can see here, it's running at 80 kilohertz, which corresponds to 400k baud rate. Uh, the input channel one, uh, the peak to peak is 3.3 volts, and the peak to peak for the output uh, of the inverter is also at 3.3 volts. And if you see, uh, the green channel two is no longer flat on top. Okay, it's inverted uh, with respect to the yellow channel one. So if I can, see, let's see if I can zoom in here. Yeah, you see. So whenever channel one is low, channel two is high. When channel one is high, channel two is low. This is how the inverter is supposed to work. So what you're looking at here is the back of the QX7 main board. If you're doing the inverter mod you would remove this transistor right here, designated Q400, and solder a wire to this pad. And this red wire then runs off to the output of the inverter mod. Okay. So the chip on the inverter mod is just an off-the-shelf uh, inverter logic gate chip made by Texas, Texas Instruments. You can get the data sheet online and try to understand how this chip works. So what we observe from the oscilloscope is that the input of the chip is swinging at around 1.5 volts peak to peak, but the output is staying at a logic high, which is 3.3 volts, and 3.3 volts is the supply voltage. This tells us that the inverter chip is not detecting an input high in order to invert it to an output low. Looking through the data sheet, we find that the input high threshold for this chip is 2 volts and we're only getting 1.5 volts. Something is pulling the input voltage lower than what the chip is expecting. Now, uh, going through the PCB trace, uh, you can see that there's only two components that, which are connected to the S port. This is the S port pin, okay, which is uh, basically uh, connected to the S port at the, G, at the GR module bay. There's this resistor R402 right here which is going to the original transistor right here and there's this uh, diode DT400 uh, that's between the S port and ground. right? So this part here is probably to trigger the base of the MPN uh, transistor to do the inversion for the original uh, using the original transistor, but we remove that so it shouldn't bother us. Then there's this diode right here. So um, I measured it with my multimeter in the diode mode and it seems to be showing a forward voltage of 0 0.3 volts from S port to ground, which seems a bit suspicious. Um, no forward voltage on the other way around, so yeah, so that should be fine. So the theory is that this diode right here is pulling the original 3.3 volts uh, signal from the S port down to 1.5 volts, and that's what's causing the inverter uh, the inverter chip to not detect a high. And so what I did is I proceed to remove this uh, diode, and everything's working fine again. Now this. Um, diode right here probably serves a purpose else Aquasky wouldn't putting it here unlike 
this nerfed up um, transistor and my best guess that uh, is that this is something like a surge protection diode a TVS of some sort to protect against the static discharge of yeah I mean somebody touching the uh, export pins so without this I would probably have to be careful not to touch the export uh, or uh, like, you know you I will run the risk of zapping it and that will be, be probably the end of you know this board or maybe the just the microcontroller not quite sure